Lille in northern France has traditionally been a stronghold for France's Socialist Party. Mehdi Chalat grew up here. He shows us around the suburb of Waterloo, where his parents still live. Like many older residents here, they came from Algeria. His mother's a cleaning lady, his father a factory worker. Chalat became interested in politics when he was just 15. One of my first political acts was to tear down a poster featuring former President Nicolas Sarkozy. I detested Sarkozy. He called people here trash that needed to be swept away. So I tore it down. He's always opposed making concessions to the Conservatives. That goes for his fellow left-wingers in Germany too. In Germany, the Social Democrats say they need to govern with the Conservatives for the good of the country, but that's a mistake, because Europe needs a common discourse. We need to say we will no longer accept the status quo, a Europe that pleases the rich and crushes the poor. Mehdi Chalar himself grew up in a poor family, but he worked hard in school and came here every evening to get help with his homework, so he was able to study law. At 17, he joined France's Socialist Party. It's been in power in Lille for decades and is renovating the area Mehdi Chalat grew up in. Though even that, he says, won't level the playing field for its residents. As a teenager, it became clear how important this association was to me, because no one could help me at home. For kids whose parents are teachers, doctors or lawyers, it's a different story, and that's simply not fair. He went into politics and moved to Paris to work as an assistant for a socialist MP. But his political aspirations were quashed during the French parliamentary election of 2017. The socialists were decimated, receiving less than 6% of the vote. Chalau wants to convince other young people in the party that the socialists themselves were to blame for the election debacle. He believes former President François Hollande should have reacted differently after the 2015 terror attacks in Paris. Many in the banlieue wouldn't observe a minute of silence for the victims or show respect and solidarity after the attacks. Still, the socialists should have listened rather than pointing the finger and calling them racist. Because there's something behind their actions. They don't feel part of France. But at the party's headquarters in Paris, the socialists fail to acknowledge that mistakes were made. People here are more focused on their impending move to new premises. Their prestigious central office building was sold due to a significant drop in membership. France's youth were once fervent supporters of socialist president François Mitterrand. Today, the editor-in-chief of magazine La Revue Socialiste has a pessimistic view of the future. If you're a socialist who cares about the party, there's not much reason to be happy. But it looks bad for socialists all over Europe. Of course we'll continue to exist, but perhaps as a small party that's dependent on others. It's a far cry from what we'd hoped for. Many young socialists have joined President Emmanuel Macron's party, La République en Marche, or drifted to the extreme left. But a small group is trying to save the Socialist Party. Teacher Maxime Barillot is among them. He's a village councillor who's continuing the party's work at the grassroots level. He's strictly against forming an alliance with Macron's party. Today, Macron is a complete right-winger. He makes right-wing policies that benefit the super-rich. At least in Germany, the young socialists position themselves against the Grand Coalition. The young people were the only ones. They knew they'd have to sell their souls to govern with Merkel. In Lille, Mehdi Chala is convinced that the socialists have a future in France, provided that the party undergoes a radical restructuring. Before we debate our political agenda, we must sort out how we'll reorganize the party internally. And he feels that Germany's social democrats should do the same to rejuvenate socialist parties and politics across Europe.